You know, dungeon tiles are not always the best solution. In fact, they are sometimes a terrible solution. And on this episode, I want to talk about why I ditched the dungeon tiles and switched to a classic battle mat for my next game. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. There should be no debate about whether or not I love dungeon tiles. Obviously, I do. But the reality is, sometimes they're not the best solution. They have flaws. It doesn't matter what type or system of dungeon tiles you use, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. If you use my wallless 3x3 tile system, there's a few really great advantages. One is that they are very versatile. You're not limited by shape or size with the wall configuration. They're fast to put down. They look good. Overall, you can get a lot of versatility from them. However, they fail monumentally when you're trying to do something like a pre-published module map where there's a lot of intersecting rooms where with shared walls and kind of elaborate patterns, it's just friggin' impossible to make it with these tiles. These tiles are best for homebrew maps, where you're basically designing the world and the, and the layout based on the tools you have at hand, building and designing at the same time. And when I do homebrew stuff, I tend to do bigger rooms, where it's from one to the next with big setups or a couple big rooms, not these small micro room intertwined dungeons. When I try to do one of those, it becomes very frustrating. Now, there are tile systems that do that a little bit better. If you take, you know, DM Scotty's or the DMG's classic tiles, well then you can make any shape or size room you want and it solves that problem, but you lose versatility very quickly. There's DM Scotty's D&D Next style tile, where it's just a mat with uh, modular walls. And that is in theory great, and it allows you to do a lot, but experimenting with that kind of system myself, I found it to be kind of a pain uh, to have all those loose walls all over the place and set them up on the fly, they'd fall over. It, it wasn't really right for me. I think Wylock has actually solved this problem best with his tile system, because he uses the walls and he also uses uh, inch and a quarter grid so that you don't lose the space from the walls. It's, it's actually a really brilliant bit of engineering and I love that system. However, what I don't love is the fact that you have to build such a wide variety of tile styles to have a full arsenal. With mine, you don't need as many tiles, but you have limitations. With him, you can do a lot more but you have to build way more. None of these systems are perfect. They are all flawed in some way. There is one system that kind of circumvents all these flaws, and that is the classic battle mat, the one inch grid paper or dry erase mat. It really is the most universally usable system. The obvious drawback is that it isn't as nice. Recently, I was setting up for my second session of the Sunless Citadel, and I was getting incredibly stressed out trying to do that map with my tiles. And it got to a point where it was really detrimental to my enjoyment of the hobby. It was stressing me out. It was making me not want to play. I, I finally said, this has sucked all the fun out of it. Either I go back and just scrap the whole module we just started and go right into full home brew world, or I find a better solution. And I really didn't want to have to give up on the module because it was a nice fun change for me and my group to play through you know, pre-published adventure. So I had to come up with a better solution. It was right around this time when a viewer reached out to me and asked me if he could send me a product that he makes to see what I thought about it. The product was dry erase battle mats. And when he approached me and asked if he could send me some battle mats, at first I wasn't actually that interested because dry erase mats were not really that exciting to me. It just so happened that while I was sitting there stressed out about how to do these maps with my tiles, that I remembered I had just gotten these in the mail. And I said, you know what? Screw it. And I decided to make the switch. I gave myself permission to get rid of the tiles and do something a little bit simpler 
for the sake of the game. So I opened up one of the battle mats. At first, I wasn't super impressed with it. I did like that they came with a set of dry erase markers and a set of dice, which is fantastic. You can always use more dice. But my first impression was that they curled really badly and I had concern it wouldn't lay flat. Luckily, with a little bit of rolling in the other direction just once, it they did lay nice and flat. So I was pleasantly surprised about that. They're double-sided, which is really nice. One side is just a white one inch grid. The other side is more of an aged parchment kind of look. And that's the side I decided to use. The size of the mat was a little bit longer than my game table. So I actually decided to trim the mat down a little bit so that it could fit inside of my playable area. I quickly got to work drawing my map. It was very liberating. I all of a sudden got excited again to run this session. I got the map drawn up really quickly. The fact that it was dry erase allowed me to correct errors, unlike on you know a paper with marker where I'd, had, I'd definitely end up redoing things a bunch of times. Once I had my map drawn on the dry erase paper, which was very true to the module's layout and size, I then did something that I thought was pretty clever. I took a photograph of the battle mat with my phone, put it on my computer, and printed out a copy for myself to use while DMing as the map. And it was great because it directly was exactly the same. It'll make it very easy to recognize the rooms in correlation. After I printed it out, I just wrote in the room numbers and highlighted all of the rooms. I decorated the battle mat with a bunch of 3D terrain to kind of enhance it. Because I stopped wasting time stressing about tiles, it allowed me to make a bunch of cool little features for this session that I otherwise probably wouldn't have had time to do. After I had the whole mat set up, I took a sorting tray and I took all the contents of each room, put them in the tray, numbered it. This would allow me to quickly grab all the stuff from one room and drop it on the battle mat as we played. I was left in the end with one slight problem and that was the whole fog of war aspect. I didn't wanna to have to draw this map on the fly. I liked the idea of having it pre-drawn. A really simple solution was to just take some black construction paper and cut it into the shapes and sizes of spaces that I wanted to cover. I glued a couple little tabs on them. So when my players sit down, it'll all be blacked out and I can reveal the map one little chunk at a time. Overall, I'm really excited about this and really surprised at how fun it's actually been to work with the dry erase battle mat. I didn't give them enough credit in the past. And honestly, sitting here looking at the setup that's a mix of dry erase sketching and 3D terrain, I really like the aesthetic. I don't think it actually detracts anything at all. In fact, it has a really unique look that I love. The kind of look that I love about the Runehammer ICRPG and a lot of like printable map stuff. It, it has this classic vibe that I th think is going to play really well at my table. I'm having this session tonight, so we'll see how it actually goes in practice, but I'm pretty confident that it is going to go well. So these battle mats, I'm gonna give a two thumbs up rating to. Keep in mind, these are the only dry erase battle mats I've used, so I don't know how they compare to ones made by other manufacturers. But I think these are good. I think for the price, uh, when you factor in the dice and the markers, it's a good value. So if you want to pick one of them up, I will post a link in the description to them on Amazon. I will also put it in my essential equipment store on blackmagiccraft.ca. So you can purchase those and you can help out the channel by doing it through my affiliate links. For my Patreon supporters, because I love you guys so much, I actually got three of these. I'm gonna keep two of them for my own use, but the third one I'm going to give to one of you. So, Patreon folks, at all levels, when you watch this video and you see this, go back to the Patreon page. There will be the post where you can see this video in advance. On that post, put in the comments, I'm in. That'll give you a chance to win one of these battle mats. 
and I will send one to you as a thank you for your support. Of course, if you aren't already a supporter on Patreon, I highly encourage you to consider doing so. It helps out the channel in a large way, and I would love to have you as the next member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship because it is my favorite way to interact with all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. Of course, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And until next week, guys, cheers, happy crafting, and wish me luck in tonight's game. Peace.